Hey everybody, Pastor Matt coming to you from my front yard here in Boonesboro, Virginia. I am so glad that you tuned in. Uh, this is day four of our study on the restoration of Peter, coming in from the Christ Bible study that we've actually been doing for the last year and a half on our Wednesday night life group meetings. And so I'm super excited about what God is doing. Uh, even though we're not able to meet together, uh, maybe physically, uh, he is definitely joining us together in spirit. And uh, I hope that these videos have been great for you. Uh, please comment below on some of the things that you might have learned from this. Um, and again, uh, I don't see too many comments about people praying uh, for each other. Use this as a tool, guys. Like, put your prayer requests on there. Allow us to pray for each other. Allow us to be uh, be close, even though that we're far uh, in in distance. Lord, our distance. Let us know that the Lord is working. Uh, in and through us, uh, through the power of prayer. And uh, so, yeah, put your prayers on the comments below. I would love to, to hear what uh, what God is doing. If you got a God story, if you just want to share what you ate for lunch, I'm cool with that, whatever. You know, but uh, but definitely let us be connected. Let us continue to, to fight for that connectedness, even though we're not able to be together uh, in person. We're definitely unified in spirit. So, uh, within that, let's uh, go into our lesson today. Uh, this is going to be out of 1 John, and it's going to be 1 John uh, verses, and you might see some of my neighbors pass by, uh, which is great. Um, they might even say hey to me, which would be cool. I'll introduce you to them. But um, within that, we're going to go into 1 John again, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Um, and this is what the Word of God says, and this is on the New Living Translation. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not, we are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are not only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Crazy. So, within that, I just want to put it out there that we are to be people that walk in the light. And walking in the light will prevent us actually from from sinning which is awesome uh, we're also in God's presence and all of God's power is in us when we walk in his ways so when we follow in obedience to what God has for us then we're actually doing what God wants us to do and in that the power of God rises up within us to be able to do things that we never even thought possible so God keeps us aware of things that can enter into our lives and trips us up so he makes us aware of sin and all that uh, so that we might know what what God is doing in our lives. How are y'all? Doing well, doing well. Some of my neighbors, which is cool. But um, but yeah, so within all this, um, I want us to, uh, to realize um, a couple of things that um, that through our relationship with God, we actually are connected in to the family of God uh, through uh, through His blood. Um, this makes us brothers and sisters in a way that we never would have been able to be connected uh, without the sacrifice of Christ. Um, also, uh, this allows us to be aware um, of sin in our lives. See, before we knew Christ, before the Holy Spirit lived in us, uh, sin was just something we would do, right? Um, by definition, a sinner's job is to sin. Right? That's what they do. That's what, what sinners do. They, they trip up, they fail, they fall. Um, they get in snafus and all kind of uh, problems happen uh, within that. Uh, so I just want to encourage us to, to realize that, uh, that even in the midst of, of sin, even in the midst of, of times that, that we fail or we have problems, that, uh, that God is still there with us, that God is working in us and through us um, and he is allowing us to understand that in our sin, we're not just sitting there, right? We're not just, uh, we don't just have to be in that sin, that we can actually confess it to God and be released of that. And that's what, 
Peter was having the understanding. Remember, Jesus took Peter beside uh, and he talked to him about uh, if he really loved him, asked those questions of him. Uh, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter even got a little hurt by it because Jesus asked him three times. Uh, but what Jesus was doing was reaffirming to him that the restoration was real. That, uh, that though he denied him three times, uh, he also made up three times with Peter. And so it's a miraculous thing that, that God allows for us uh, to have partnership with him. Because even in the midst of our sin, there is forgiveness for us. And not only forgiveness, but remember, there's this, this cherry on top called restoration. So he actually gives us a platform to do good works. So it's not just us being on level with people, but it's us being able to then call people to righteousness as well. Um, because ultimately, God wants everyone to know who he is. And through that ability to call out to people and say, hey, there's a better way, we're able to actually connect to people and realize that, uh, that there is work to be done and, and be able to share in that fellowship with each other. But it's through obedience that God makes us aware of our sin. It's through obedience to Christ uh, that we see the ability to, to talk and commune with him and to be able to do the things that, uh, that we're called to do. And he gives us ministry within that. Anyways, uh, we do fail at times to do that. Uh, and when we do, we need to confess our sins. We've talked about that and return to God because he will restore our relationship with him through that, through that confession, uh, uh, that repentance. And it's God's kindness, the word says, that leads us to that place of repentance. Uh, it's not that our relationship with God is damaged. Nothing can take away our relationship with God. But unforgiven sin can actually affect our fellowship with Him. It makes us feel distant from Him. Uh, even though we are still saved, um, there's this distance that we feel because of that sin that we're holding on to. But as soon as we confess that sin, then God can sit there and go, All right, restoration happens. And that's a beautiful thing. So when we make a mistake, Jesus still loves us. He wants us to come back to him in, in the midst of that. Um, but the, the thing that we need to understand is, is where we belong, right? So the, the, the reality of, of, of us as Christians is that we belong as close as we can, uh, can be to God. And he wants us to be as close as we can be to him. And so um, I want to just leave, leave you with this today. Um, as you pray, as you pray for one another, as you pray for yourself, as you pray for the world, as you pray that, that God would relieve us of, uh, of, of this uh, coronavirus, of the COVID-19, uh, Wuhan virus, whatever way you want to call it, uh, that within that, that when, when we pray that we are really acknowledging that we are doing the work of God together, that we are, uh, that we are partnering with him and allowing him to, to use us, even in the depth of who we are, that he can use us to, to an extreme way, in an extreme way, to, uh, to do extreme things uh, for him and for the gospel. Um, so know that you might be sitting in your home right now, and you might be sitting there getting a little stir crazy, uh, not being able to do the normal routines that you do, or not be able to do and go uh, to different places, different restaurants, different things, whatever it is. Um, but know that God has some really cool things for you in that place of prayer. Let this be a time that you actually draw close to him. Um, maybe this is something that God is doing to allow us to really sit there and say, hey, I'm here. Focus on me. You know. And so I really want to encourage you guys to, uh, to use this time uh, to, to, to grow in the word. Uh, read the scripture. It's not a boring book. It's an amazing adventure uh, that God has for us. It's a love letter written to us that shares God's heart with us. And when we walk in obedience of his scripture, when we walk in obedience of what he, he speaks to us to do, when we walk in obedience in that place of prayer, it opens us up to see the big things of God. So use this time as a time of prayer. Use this time as a time that grows you in God. And uh, if there's any help that you need, if there's any questions that you have, comment below. Pastor Matt's here for you. Know that I'm praying for you. Know that, uh, that you're loved and that God loves you and that there is such a tremendous blessing in that place of prayer. So as God draws you near, know that he's drawing you near to use you in mighty ways. This is Pastor Matt. If you need something, holler at your boy. Have a good day.